Welcome back to Adobe Photoshop. So today we're gonna to take a look at guides and guides are those annoying little blue lines that you've accidentally dragged out every once in a while and then couldn't figure out how to remove them and they're just kind of stuck there on your image, annoying you and driving you nuts. So today we're gonna to take a look at the useful application of guides. Now as a photographer, I'm not using guides all that often. I think graphic designers or illustrators are more likely to use guides. But I'm gonna show you a couple different applications for guides and how to use them and set them up inside of Adobe Photoshop. So we have a, a grid of images that I've downloaded here. So let's say that we have something like this. In this case, it's a group of hearts and we wanna lay these out on a page. Well, how do I align these so everything is in the correct position? And the answer actually is guides. Guides will allow you to easily align stuff. Now, one of the cool things that you'll find with guides is there's something called snap to, where you're allowing the program to snap to the guides. If you want stuff to snap and make sure it snaps, what you would do is just go up here to view and then notice that we have snap. And then under snap, we have snap too, and we can select whatever we want, guides, layers, documents, or we can come down there and hit none. In this case, I'm gonna leave it so it snaps to everything. And that's how you make things snap to your guides in Photoshop. And that makes it really easy to set stuff up. So guides are available a couple of different ways. Up here, I have the ruler set up and I put it in inches right here, but you can change it however you want. To hide your rulers, you're either gonna hit Command or Control R, and it will hide them and show them. So very easy. Now, if you wanna use a different unit of measure other than inches, you can right click and you can change it right here. So we have the ability to use pixels, centimeters, millimeters, points, picas, and percent. Percent, remember that one, we're gonna come back to it. Now, guides are pretty easy. We have this set up as a ruler, and you can see right here, this is kind of a weird dimension. It's not right at 10 inches. So me trying to divide this in thirds mathematically would be somewhat difficult to do without using a calculator and trying to figure it out. Plus, getting lines exactly set up on this is difficult, even though you can see it. Look, if it was just on the three, it would be easy, but when you start using sixteenths or in centimeters, millimeters, it's just difficult to do, but there's a better way to set up guides. The easiest way is obviously you come up to the ruler, you click, hold, and drag down, and it brings your guide, and you can try to line it up on the numerical unit that you want. So let's say I wanted it right here. I can set that up, and now that guide is set there and it is this little line. These are, these are old cyan layout lines that they used to use in printing. So back in the old days when you would do a print layout, you would see these blue guides everywhere. When the camera took a picture to make the negative, these blue lines didn't show up. That's why they use that specific color. Now, if you wanna move the guide, you need to make sure that your move tool up here by hitting the letter V is active. And then when you get it, you see you get that little symbol that we get right there, and then you can just click hold and drag that back up and it will disappear. You can do the same vertically. We can drag those over, drag that line there. And then if we don't want it, we can grab it, drag it back into the ruler and it's gone. You can also hide and show your guidelines. So let's go ahead, just bring out a couple lines here. And so right now we have these lines. I am gonna hit command semicolon and your guides are gonna hide command semicolon and it shows your guides back. Now, if I wanna clear my guides, I can go under view. So all this stuff, these quick keys that I've been telling you are under view. So we can go down here and this is new guide, but in this case, we wanna hit clear guides and it's gonna remove what we did right there. Now, in this case, I could manually come in here and add these guides by just dragging and dropping them. I could also come up here and go to view, new guide, and I can do this a couple different ways. First of all, I wanna decide whether I need to make a vertical guide or a horizontal guide. In this version, we're gonna go ahead and make the vertical guide. 
if this was a set of numbers that I could easily divide into thirds, I could manually put that number in there and it would put the guide in the right spot. But there's actually an easier way to do that. So we're gonna type in 33.3% and that's automatically gonna figure out where the first third is and put that guideline. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Bam, just like that. That guide is perfectly on that third. So then we can come up here and do it again. So we go to view, to new guide, and this time we're gonna do 66.6% and bam, right there, there's our second third. So I've got this in thirds. Now I have this divided up vertically in two thirds and you can see this is it perfectly aligned. So obviously the person when they laid this out didn't use guides. But there's an easier way to do this instead of doing it manually one by one. So we're gonna come up here to view and we're gonna hit clear guides and then I'm gonna go back down and go to new guide layout, much better. Notice right here, right now we're in custom, but we do have some presets. And down here we have columns and rows. And in this instance, notice I've got three and three. Well, why? Because I wanna do this in a three by three grid. If I need margins, I can add margins to this. And if I need to clear any existing guides or center columns, I can click on that information. But just by putting three and three, it's automatically doing all those different guides and I don't have to type really anything in. If I wanted to make this three by four, I could simply just come in here and do three by four, and now it's gonna break it up into guides like that. But in this case, we're gonna go ahead and do three by three, and bam, just like that. Now I know that this heart should be in this spot, this heart should be in this spot, this heart should be in this spot, and it makes it really easy for me to kind of drag and drop and get stuff aligned on a page by using guides. And then when I'm done, and if I don't want to see those guides anymore, I can hit command semicolon and they're gone. If I need them to come back, command semicolon and bam, they're back. So that is how you use guides to lay stuff out. So we'll go ahead and close this one out. Hit don't save. Now, sometimes you are working on a template. So this is a template that we have. And once you put your picture over the template, and what this means here is, this is the trim line, so if this was to get printed, this is where it's gonna get trimmed and cut. And this green line is showing us the safety zone, meaning that any important data, you wanna make sure it's inside of this green line. But when you put your image over top of it, you, you lose that. Now you can lower the opacity to see what's below it, or you can use guides. So let's go ahead and turn this back off. And we can grab some guides and I can just hover these right over where those dotted lines are. So we'll come down there and put a guide there, a guide there, guide there. And if I don't get them lined up perfectly, we're just doing this tutorial. We want to do this quick. A guide there. And then we're going to come in here. Guide there. Guide there. Right there. And guide there. Then when we turn that back on, bam, just like that, we've got our guide layout set and ready to go. And we know that this outer guide is where it's gonna be trimmed and the inner guide is where we need to have important data. And then once we've got it all set up, you can simply just go ahead and save this. When you print it or you save it out, it's, it's not gonna print these guides on your image. They're just there to show you for layout purposes. So you don't have to worry, even if you do save them with the guide showing and you send it to get printed out, the blue lines aren't gonna get printed. But if it makes you happier, once again, command or control semicolon and you can hide those guides and they're gone just like that. So that's a way to use layout for templates. In that template, in this case, it was a postcard, but if it was for a book or anything that you want, you're always gonna have some sort of guides to do it. One of the guides I use a lot is if I'm using a book, I'll put a guide in at 50%. So what I would do is go to new guide and then we'll do vertical again. And in this case, 50%. And that's going to give me my center point of this image. So I know that the fold is going to be right here in the center and I can make sure that there's nothing important like someone's eye or something going right through that fold that I don't want.
right here, we have this little design that I found. And what we can do is we're gonna drag some guides in it and see how accurate they were to getting words lined up in the grid. So if I come up here and I drag this down and I go to photo, you will notice that group and photo are on this line, but like really isn't. Now, there's no reason it had to be, but if you were laying something out like this and you wanted photo, like, and group to all be on the same line, it's really easy by placing a guide. So let's go ahead and get some type and we'll just make it black and we'll just use the plain Laura Ipsum, that's gonna be good. And so now when I drag this down, you're gonna see when it gets close to the line, it's gonna snap and it's gonna hit it. It's gonna go down and snap and it's gonna set right on that line. Each type that you put is gonna actually snap to that grid and go right in place. So everything will line up perfect. And if you have another line, which I'll show you here in a second, it will snap this way and to the vertical line as well. All right, so let's say that somebody gave us this template and they want us to put a picture in here, a picture in here, and the type in here. And this is just setting up how we want things to work. So what we'll do is we'll come over, we're gonna create a, a new layer because we're eventually not gonna use this. And I'm gonna use two guides. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna grab a guide. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so we can see this a little better. We're gonna drag down some guides this way. And we're gonna drag another guide here. And we'll just do two. Normally we'd do it for all three. So we're gonna go ahead and zoom back out. And let's go ahead and get some type. Come in here and get some type. That looks pretty good. And we'll click on that. And now when we take this type and we go in here, as I drag this over, you can see it snaps right into this spot. It's so as I go over, it's gonna snap right up against those two guides. So now it's up against that blue and up against that blue. In this case, it looks a little bit weird because you're seeing the grid, but eventually that grid's gonna be hidden, so you're not gonna see that. What we wanna do is line this type and this type all up so they all look good. So let's go ahead and grab another one. And in this one, we'll call hidden type for no reason, we're gonna grab this and we're gonna drag it in there and it's gonna snap to that grid, just like this, okay? So now that's snapped in there to that grid. And then eventually when I turn this off, those are gonna be perfectly aligned because we're snapping them to the grid. So guidelines make it really easy to align type and both images into a page to make, they, to make sure everything is perfectly aligned. So if we have a guide here and a guide here, even though we have an image up here and an image up here, both of them can align perfectly to this vertical guide so that the web page is gonna be completely flush from here all the way down to here. And so that's a little bit about how to use guides in Adobe Photoshop. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>